Okay, so I'm really terrible at investing. I swear to you, people think it's a joke, a meme or something. It's fact. Any of my Patreon subscribers will tell you this. And it all comes down to a very simple principle. Good investing is all about having no idea what you're doing, but being insanely confident while doing it. This is why alcohol is such a good tool to use while investing. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be violent, guys, when the lawsuits start piling in. Okay, the classic quote, the more you know, the slower your portfolio grows, something like that. I like to visualize it like this. There are three variables that tell me everything I need to know about you as an investor. We got confidence on the Y axis, competence on the X, and returns on the Z. Here we have a visualization of the relationship between those three. In the beginning here we can see confidence is high, returns are high, you're probably high, but competence is down here. This is incredibly important to understand if you want to make money in the stock market. As competence increases, you begin to realize that everything is priced in. This in turn leads to confidence decreasing and thus the inevitable death of your returns. Math is fucking crazy. I need to make this video and instead I've just been messing around with this graph for like an hour. Okay, TikTok finance, it doesn't have the best reputation, but here's the thing. Who does have a good reputation for picking stocks well? TikTokers? No. Reddit? No. Seeking Alpha? No. Analysts? No. Hedge funds? Not really. So what? what? What's really the difference? I wanted to come to an answer. An answer to a question that no one was asking. Is TikTok really a good place to seek financial advice? The thing is, some of these TikToks are so bad, I, I can't tell if they're like some high-level meta humor and I'm the dumb one missing the joke. And buy some Louis Vuitton and shop for some nice watches. Come on watch shopping? It's like it would be hard to manufacture a more cliche video if you were trying to. Another 19 year old day trading millionaire, videos in the R8, classic, $294 course. Call it a 2% conversion rate, $294 course. The guy could have easily made $60,000 in the past two months. I need to do this. So people keep asking me, how are you so rich? How are you so wealthy? How are you affording all these cars? I actually don't even use my own money to buy all this. I buy all my real estate with the bank's money, all my cars with the bank's money. I don't even use my own money. See, this is one of those ones where I thought this was just another person trying to shill their course, but real estate is spelled real state. So I just, I don't know. I can't tell if this is satire. He is right though. All you need to do is borrow money and then one day you might have enough money to buy real estate. Can't buy real estate using this strategy though, just real estate. I've been looking at TikToks for like the past hour. I don't get this app. The music, the horrible green screen effect thing. I think most of the people making these videos have good intentions. There's just no way any half decent trading strategy can be broken down in 15 or 30 seconds. I don't like making trading strategy videos anymore because, well one, I'm just, I'm terrible at investing. But also because even in a 10 minute YouTube video, it's hard to jam in all the necessary information that'll give you a chance of making money. TikTok is just not a platform that's compatible with complicated and nuanced trading strategies. Okay, I absolutely love this comment because options trading is technically like a financial starting point. A lot of finance gurus see it as a starting point. Options as a starting point? I guess that is true. If you start by losing everything, the only way to go is up. Now, if we were going to do a thorough test of whether or not any of these strategies actually work, we would want to test it with a big sample size over a long period of time so we can be certain that the strategy actually works or doesn't and any result can't just be attributed to luck. But I don't want to do that because it's going to take too long, so I'm just going to do what any good scientist does when working on a time constraint. Use sample sizes that are too small so we can come to whatever conclusion is most convenient for the video. This is legally science. The scientific Method, meth head. Half-assed TikTok trading strategy, half-assed test by a YouTuber critiquing it. Welcome to the internet finance bubble, everybody. You're now mentally retarded. After looking at TikTok strategies for a while, I realized it was finally time to break out the old Robinhood account so I could test a strategy out. I decided to test this option strangle strategy. Also, please don't harass this guy. Nobody in the finance space knows what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. We're all figuring it out, losing money together, and that's what makes it so fun. I'm gonna show you guys an almost can't lose stock strategy that literally you can profit either way on the stock. So an option strangle basically means that you're buying a call and a put 
at the money, basically they're next to each other. Then when you do that, all it needs is a significant move up or a significant move down and you profit either way. Literally most stocks either go up or down. They're not very choppy. So you literally profit either way and you give yourself enough time. So my favorite stock to do this with is AMD. So AMD has been having significant moves in the past few days because it usually shoots up. And if it's shot up this direction, we could have unlimited profit and your max loss is only what you paid for the strangle. I chose this one because I think a lot of people would hear this, hear how simple it sounds and think, I have literally just found free money. When in reality, I think this is probably one of the worst option strategies you could introduce to people who don't really know what they're doing on TikTok. Financial starting point. Here's why this shouldn't work. The volatility you're anticipating is already priced into the option. If you want to make money, the stock's move up or down has to be larger than the market's anticipated volatility. Beyond that, the market already tends to anticipate future volatility to be higher than it actually is. So what people on TikTok hear is, I can make money if a stock goes up or down. This is free money. In reality, it's just a process of you getting fucked from every possible direction, I promise. But that's all just the, the acidic above the shoulders mustard shit. That's all theory that doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna forget everything I know about why this shouldn't work and go for it. He uses AMD as an example in this video saying that it's been highly volatile for the past few days, which means buying a strangle is a good idea. Once again, intuitively, this is the exact opposite of what you'd want to do with this strategy. Our strangle makes money if volatility increases. People consider volatility to be mean reverting, so the last thing we want to do is buy when volatility has recently increased. Increased. But once again, theory, competence, it doesn't matter in investing. I'm just going to follow the strategy from TikTok exactly how it is. I'm not going to bring in any of my own ideas. Let's just do it. Watch, it's going to return like 50% in two days, I promise you. That's the way this works. I decided to look for big companies with relatively high implied volatility. I landed on MasterCard. The past year chart has been choppy. Its implied volatility is at a relative high, which means people are anticipating more future volatility. Now, suppose Supposedly, we make money if the stock goes up or down and it's been going up and down a lot. This should be good for us. I bought this strangle expiring in a few days and it proceeded to lose money very quickly, despite the underlying moving above our call strike. Why? Because in order for this strategy to work, the underlying has to blow way past either our call or put strike. It also has to do so quickly enough to counteract the time decay of both options. So, of course, it's not as easy as it seems on paper. But I'm not ready to give up yet. After seeing how this strategy performed, I thought that maybe instead of testing another, it would be more fun to make a few critical adjustments to this one and then use it to hopefully make money. Like I said earlier, when you try to simplify a complicated and nuanced trading strategy, you lose so much vital information that it basically becomes worthless. So I'm gonna try to simplify this with memes, but just forewarning you, it's gonna be dense. The outcome should be cool though. I'll put chapters on the video if you wanna skip to the result. Like I said before, I think going long volatility like in the strategy above is one of the hardest ways for us retail degenerates to make money. The main reason being that isolating volatility exposure is very difficult to do when considering the other components of the option that are fucking you, specifically time decay and the directional move of the underlying. On top of that, volatility is considered mean reverting, which means if you're betting that it's going to increase, you probably need to have a well-established catalyst, a really solid exit plan, and good position sizing to be able to profit whenever a volatility spike comes along. And let's be honest here, exit strategy, proper position sizing, not in your vocabulary. But all hope is not lost. Implied volatility also trends in another way that might be much better for the average retail degenerate to capitalize on. Instead of betting that volatility will go up, why don't we bet that it'll go down and use time to fuck somebody else? It's what Doctor Strange would have wanted. What we need to do is find a place where implied volatility is elevated. We know IV has mean reverting properties, so if we short it, we might be able to make money. Conveniently, during earnings season, implied volatility tends to increase during the weeks before an earnings release. Fear and uncertainty around any big catalyst like earnings leads option prices to increase. So maybe we can sell these expensive options. That way time decay is working in our favor and hopefully a drop in implied volatility will work in our favor as well. I decided to open an iron condor on Levi's stock before they reported earnings. We make money with this strategy if implied volatility decreases and the underlying stays within the range of our strikes. What I found the next day was interesting. 
interesting. Levi reported great earnings, leading the stock to rally 10% in the next day. A big move like this should have destroyed our position as the stock neared our short call strike. However, our prediction played out well. Implied volatility tanked after earnings as expected, simultaneously tanking the value of the options we sold. By Friday, the options we sold had lost most of their value, leading to some decent gains. Now, I wanted to do this to illustrate a point, but the fact that it worked doesn't mean it's a good strategy or that shorting volatility through earnings will work long term. The strategy we used has a much higher win rate than the one from TikTok, but that doesn't mean its expected value is higher than that one. Just because this didn't work doesn't mean it's a bad strategy. I was using it to demonstrate that it's a lot more complicated and nuanced than TikTok makes it out to be. So even though we made money, the options market is priced efficiently, which means if you do this long enough, it will implode. And it will be violent, probably resulting in you losing all of your gains. But this implied volatility mean reversion idea is something that could be tested and developed into a real standalone strategy. So I think we've come to an answer. Is TikTok a good place to learn about the financial gambling? markets. Probably not, but in the financial markets, you'll probably lose money no matter where you get your education, so it doesn't really matter. But if there's one thing we can take away from the TikTok finance space, it's that during the gold rush, the real money is made from selling shovels. It's not worth buying online courses from finance gurus on the internet. Instead, it's far more fulfilling to use that money to develop your own subscription-based trading indicator group. Allow the plebs to finance your rented lifestyle and then use that rented lifestyle to sell them more education. Do this until you get into a CoffeeZilla video. Except, yeah, don't, don't do that, because that, that's what I'm going to do.